All right, so I'm going to go over quickly again this example of feedback passivation that we did. This is on the uh, standard Euler Lagrange model for a robotic manipulator. Okay, so this is a very general model. If you remember, we talked about this. You you uh, can use any kind of coordinates. That's why they're called the Qs are called generalized coordinates. They could be the angle coordinates or they could be the linear coordinates. Yeah, so your robot could have this motion or it could have you know sort of elongation and you know you can have a pneumatic actuator which sort of elongates and you know gets bigger and so on and so forth or you could have then or you could have spherical joints whatever you can have different kinds of uh, variables and that's why it's called generalized coordinates it's not just cartesian coordinates it's also maybe angle coordinates um, and it is very much possible to write all of them in this form yeah no problem yeah the only uh, cases where you cannot write them in this form, uh, the robot dynamics in this form is typically the non-holonomic cases, yeah, where you have some non-holonomic constraints. We, are, we have not talked about those, so do not worry about it. Um, in those cases, the model looks different, yeah, because there is some, um, you have to have redundant variables because there are non-holonomic constraints. So that, that is the only case where you will have different kind of models than this one. But otherwise, most robotic manipulators uh, can be modeled in this. In fact, even mobile robots can be modeled in this if the wheels are of omnidirectional, if it's an omnidirectional robot. Yeah? If you have an omnidirectional mobile robot, that can also be modeled like this, no problem. Okay? So that's sort of the nice thing. This encapsulates a lot of different uh, systems. Okay? The control is on the right hand side. Typically, you will see the control as being uh, motors mounted on the joints hmm, for angular motion. For linear motion also you can have linear actuators. Okay? So that is the control typically like a torque or a force. Okay? All right. uh, if you remember I mentioned that this M matrix is the inertia matrix. It is symmetric and positive definite always. Okay? Uh, C is the damping, uh, or well, C is not the damping, C is the centrifugal and Coriolis forces, okay, and D is the uh, viscous damping, yeah, we are not a modeling course, otherwise we can talk, we would have talked about how to arrive at these matrices, so we are not going to talk about how to arrive at these, we will just give you some of these matrices, alright. Um, G is of course the gravity term, yeah, if you are, if gravity is a factor, then you have to add the gravity terms also, alright. Um, you, uh, one of the facts that is known about this model is that m dot minus 2c is q symmetric. Okay? Uh, what is the value of this? It means that any uh, quadratic form that you construct with any vector eta on this on a skew symmetric matrix that is 0. Okay? Quadratic form of a skew symmetric matrix is always 0. Okay? This is again standard result. All right. uh, Suppose the aim is to track a constant reference, yeah, I was careful, we discussed this. If it is a time varying reference, then you have to do a little bit more jugglery, it is not this simple. Hmm? So if you have a constant reference qr, okay, then your error model, yeah, error is q minus qr, the error model actually looks exactly similar, okay. Again, because I chose a constant reference r, hmm? that is it. Um, if you chose time varying, you will have to slightly modify how you work with this problem, yeah. We may look at it later, but not right now, yeah. So, uh, constant reference model would mean that it is a, what, a, what we call set point regulation problem, yeah. It means I start at some configuration and I end at some configuration, okay. I give a start configuration and an end, con so whatever you folks, if you work with quadrotus, typically you give waypoints, right. It is this, you go from one waypoint to the other, you are not giving a trajectory in between. Sometimes, but uh, but more often than not, you would also want to specify the trajectory in between, so that you are not following very, very bad trajectories to reach from one point to the other. That is not covered here. Hmm? We are only going from one set point to another set point. Okay? So that is what this QR is. You construct an error, you get the error dynamics. Yeah? And we want E equal to 0 to be globally asymptotically stable here. Alright? Okay. Uh, 
we for some uh, kp equal to kp transpose positive we consider this control law for feedback passivation okay what what were we doing in feedback passivation we were saying that we will specify the control so that the resulting system becomes feedback passive in the new control okay that's what we are sort of doing yeah i'm already saying what u is yeah because i know this will work so this is gq minus kpe plus v which is the new control and i'm going to claim that the system is feedback passive with this control and some output we have not yet decided the output either all right output is not decided either if i plug in this control what happens if i plug this in here what happens this and this cancel out right and this kpe goes to the left hand side becomes a positive term okay that's it that's what i've written here okay so now once i have this structure and i know this is a very nice structure even for you it should be evident it's a very nice structure why first of all m is positive definite yeah all always the term on the highest derivative should be positive definite symmetric yeah it's already nice think about the routh criteria is all generalization of that only because it's almost a linear looking system not very non linear actually it's almost a linear looking system right because this is e e dot and again a e dot and then you have an e double dot right the second order almost linear looking system yeah and also the term in the connecting to the highest derivative is positive yeah again as generalization of positive yeah so if you think routh hurwitz criteria also it's nice yeah because the coefficient on the highest power should be positive right so that's already something nice that's happening okay but we since we are in the world of lyapunov and energy functions and so on and so forth we are going to actually construct a storage function right for passivity we need a storage function okay what is the storage function this guy yeah and in the context of what antonio told talked about this is the energy of the system okay why because by introducing this element okay this element is somehow a spring element i don't know if you understand this see this or not yeah this is like a spring yeah so uh, this is sort of a spring energy yeah and spring energy is what is like half kx squared right this is spring energy type of a term and what is the spring energy it's potential energy always potential energy spring energy seen as potential energy so we sort of created a fake spring where is this spring connected <laughs> yeah this is very interesting uh, this spring is sort of uh, if you have this initial state i'm just going to draw uh, this kind of a uh, revolute joints only to make my life easy and say this is the final state yeah this is set point right and so what am i trying to do i want to go from this angle to this angle right and this angle say i measure from horizontal so i want to go from uh, this angle to uh, well actually maybe better to measure it from this guy suppose i measure from this guy no i should measure from horizontal that was easier i apologize because this is also measured from horizontal i'm measuring all angles from the horizontal okay so this angle i want to go to i draw a parallel here so i want this to go to this guy yeah makes sense yeah i'm just trying to go to uh fine that's okay yeah so i want to change these angles in this way the first angle goes here second angle goes here all right now what is this spring this spring is a artificial spring that is pulling me there is one spring between these and one spring this way you can think of it as two torsional springs fake torsional springs or pseudo torsional springs which are making me move from here to here and here to here yeah it's so this is a very standard thing in robotics just like you know you think you give waypoints to quadrotors and then the quadrotor moves from one waypoint to the other 
then when you design a control in reality not in reality but in in pseudo terms or in energy terms what you are actually doing is you are creating a spring with center at the waypoint and then the control is sort of pulling it towards that waypoint you can just think of it in your mind in your head if you think like it it makes so much more sense that all i'm doing is giving it a there is a spring connected to my waypoint and then to my quadrotor body and it's just pulling it so you know it will get to that point or you can think about a damped spring so obviously it stay, stays there yeah you pull it then the next waypoint next waypoint pulls it and then the next waypoint pulls it okay so this is exactly like that i'm creating an artificial spring yeah and that is the spring energy this term is just the spring energy which is a potential energy okay and this term is obviously the kinetic energy right anything with the velocities is the kinetic energy so i constructed a potential energy. so in terms of uh, what antonio was saying the storage function is also actually an energy function yeah just that i have created some fake pseudo energies yeah which is should not be so worrisome for you because that's how we design lyapunov functions yeah we are creating some pseudo energies anyway that's the whole idea yeah so great once i have this constructed i'm just going to take the derivative because i want to claim that v dot is less than equal to some u transpose y and so on and so forth so basically the same deal as energy gained is less than equal to u transpose y okay great so what is the derivative e dot m e double dot that's the first term yeah because the half goes away because it's quadratic similarly i get e transpose kp e dot the second term but i have an additional term yeah which you should not forget as you can see i also had forgotten it very easy to forget so i wrote it later on yeah m is time varying right m is a m has variables in it it's not constant yeah if it's constant great for you but usually never will it be constant for any robot yeah just think about it this arm is moving in a fixed frame okay but the second arm is moving in the frame of the first arm okay so you have a, it will never be a fixed m matrix it will so if you think of inertia now now think inertia if i want to write the inertia in a fixed frame i mean you have to choose some frame to write the inertia if i choose to write the inertia in this frame then this is okay will be fixed well this will also not be fixed actually because as this moves there is a problem but suppose i choose this frame to write my inertia the rotating frame but then this guy is still rotating with respect to that frame yeah so if your object is moving in the frame then inertia is changing right just like you think of this fan yeah if it, well if it's on yeah right now i i'll put a frame on that the thing that is the beam that is hang that with the, with which it's hanging inertia is constant right because the mass distribution is constant fan is not moving i turn on the fan it's not constant anymore right because no yeah you you seem confused how really mass distribution remains the same even if it's a fan is rotating where is the mass in the fan on the fins yeah the center object yes it's a it's a symmetric object what you were thinking is symmetry correct if it's a symmetric object which is the center disk sure that inertia does mass distribution doesn't change with rotation because all directions are the same doesn't matter but the fins they are they have mass right and their orient their location keeps changing with respect to the axis and inertia is nothing but mass distribution and mass distribution is time varying okay so if i write the inertia with respect to that fixed frame my inertia is time varying or state varying yeah it's not actually time varying it's state varying just like that you will have for more often than not you will have you know state varying inertias okay very obvious yeah but it will not depend on uh, so so that it will not depend on q dot it will depend on only the q okay the the not the velocity states it will depend on the position states only yeah so uh, so this is there is also an m dot q okay which is the time derivative of m by the way yeah you can think of this as a little bit of abuse of notation this m dot is actually dm by dt the total derivative so it's actually partial of m with respect to q times q dot okay so remember that it's just yeah i have just written it like this um and now i'm claiming this is less than equal to v transpose y okay this is what you have to prove 
Yeah, you have to find the output. Yeah, notice I already used the new input. I'm using the new input. I'm not using the old input anymore. Hmm? I'm claiming that this is less than or equal to V transpose Y. What you have to do is you have to use this fact. That m dot minus 2c is q symmetric, that is any quadratic form with m dot minus 2c is 0. You have to use this and you will get a very nice y. Hmm? You will get a very nice y. A, if you uh, remember, I don't know, it's like not in this example, but it was somewhere. Energy shaping, yeah, in this energy shaping, whatever, this example, this was interesting, so energy shaping stuff. Yeah, he had passivity with respect to q dot. Right? In this case, if you remember, he got passivity with respect to the q dot variable. Okay. So, accordingly you have to, uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but in this case, the passivity was always with respect to the q dot variable. See if you, yeah, you had something like this. Okay. So, anyway, so basically in this case also, what I need you to do is, complete the v dot expression and you should get something like a v transpose y for some y okay you have to come back and tell me what is the y okay and you have to of course construct a feedback yeah this is pretty easy once you have a y you your feedback is just v equal to minus phi y such that y transpose phi y is positive definite yeah pretty easy actually i mean if you are yeah if you if you get a y the simplest feedback is minus k y itself as you can imagine right we we already did this in this example yeah uh, right yeah because it's v transpose y right so if you if you are uh, if you know the y then you construct y as minus k y then v transpose y is minus k norm y squared De negative definite in y okay so that's already done yeah you can of course construct you see these saturated controls also like this minus k tan hyperbolic y yeah this just ensures that your control remains within some range okay like a saturated control all right but otherwise yeah once you identify a y doing this is very easy However, you have to also ensure that or show in this case that with this particular output y, you get zero state observability. This was a little bit more work. Yeah. So basically what is the zero state observability? It is that if you are, if the output you chose is zero, then the state also has to be zero. There is no other way about it. Or if you want to define it the way I defined it the set of outputs equal the set containing output equal to 0 can not contain nothing but the trivial solution that is x equal to 0 okay you have to also show zero state observability because only with these two conditions does this control work yeah you need two conditions not just uh, passivity you also need the zero state observability all right okay